Amongst the many overnight success stories in show business lore, Midge Maisel stands out from the rest. Her journey from the Gaslight Cafe in New York's Greenwich Village to worldwide fame and notoriety is the stuff of legend. Often press shy, she agreed to sit down with me and talk about her life. Hey, you look a little nervous. Are you? Well, there's that body in my trunk. I've been meaning to dump it, but the day got away from me. It's been quite a ride. Grammy winner, Emmy winner, the French Order of the Arts and Letters. Does the phrase living legend apply? Oh, geez, Mike, I'm not dead yet. Wait, am I? Call an ambulance. Where'd this passion to perform come from? What drives Midge Maisel? I just love what I do. I love talking to people, present company accepted. I'm kidding. I like money, I'm not ashamed of that. And boy, oh boy, do I love the sound of laughs. And what she does is make people laugh. At age 30, 18 consecutive sold out nights at the Copacabana. Numerous tours in the US, Canada, and parts of Europe all sell out in minutes. There's the requisite celebrity friendships. Her shows with Bob Hope and their many trips to Vietnam were a favorite of the troops. Midge, you're looking wonderful. I love that gown. Is that a Scaparelli? Oh, I'm sorry, Bob, but I've forgotten where I bought it. You mind if I look at the label? What does it say? Off limits. That's negotiable. <laughs> As her audience grew older, her inclination to shock grew bolder, culminating in the now infamous 1971 show at Carnegie Hall. What could have been a career-ending night of infamy turned out to be, as so many things do in Midge Maisel's life, the beginning of a brand new chapter. With a brand new audience of young fans through her audacious college campus tours. On top of all that, she raised two children a son, Ethan, and a daughter, Dr. Esther Maisel. What was it like having Midge Maisel as your mother? It was an incredible childhood filled with laughter and warmth. She's a wonderful mother. The other kids must have been jealous. Oddly, yes. And then there were the men. Men. Men and Midge Maisel. So many men. You sound like my accountant. Four marriages, plus several, or should I say multiple other relationships. What gives? I don't know. Lucky in life, unlucky in love. I thought I'd marry once. Joke's on me. And then there's the relationship that lasted longer than all the others combined. You were client number one of the powerful entertainment manager, Susie Meyerson. Is that right? That's right. You know her current client list. Liza Minnelli, George Carlin, Barbara Streisand, just about everybody in Hollywood. Everybody except you. A 25-year friendship gone bust. What happened? What happened, Mike, is that two people in show business tried to have a friendship. Shall I read what she recently said about you in Variety? Don't bother, I've already had it tattooed on my ass. And then there were her clothes. And you're putting all these up for auction. Every last button and bow. In a way, these are my friends. My first night at the Gaslight. Yep, the story's true. My B. Altman switchboard dress. Those were fun times. Oh, a classic. What I wore the night of the great tarmac dump of 1960. Night five of my first Copa run. What I wore to Woodstock. I didn't perform, but I sure got muddy. Guest hosting Johnny Carson, my cameo in Mad Mad World. Oh, and this. The outfit I wore on my first day as a writer for Gordon Ford. My sitting outfit. Put a lot of thought into this one. And where do the proceeds go? The Weissman Maisel Children's Foundation. For childhood education, health, hunger, housing. Children are my best teachers. Through them, I've learned to love, to laugh, to listen. So everything I do, I do for the children. Hit the lights, ladies. And so comedy superstar Midge Maisel soldiers on. Through success and adversity, doing everything, in her words, for the children.